Oops, I opened the door. <laughs> there you go. Okay. All right. It's been a couple of months since the video of Amoeba Wheels was released. And, well, I'll just say that this marks the first time something has evolved to such an extent that it prompted me to create a follow-up sequel after the initial video is released. So, yeah. Let's reinvent the wheel. Again. In the previous video, I showcased a variety of amoeba wheels with different side dimensions. And you might have noticed that they tend to approximate regular polygons. And there is a pattern to this. When Scrap made the amoeba wheels for the first time, I noticed that when you establish a fixed ratio between the number of sides and the number of pedals, the wheel gradually converges towards a specific shape. Scrap calls this virtual sides. The number of virtual sides is one less than the ratio between the number of sides divided by the number of pedals. So, for instance, if you wanted an amoeba wheel with 60 sides and 10 pedals, you can anticipate a shape with five virtual sides, closely resembling a pentagon. And, as expected, that's precisely what you obtain. There's just one catch, though. Let's revisit the original design that initiated this exploration. Eight sides and two pedals. Using the formula, this categorizes it as part of the triangle wheels family. So, uh, where are the rest of them? Rearranging the equation, we can derive the number of sides needed, given a certain number of pedals and desired shape. So, for 3 pedals, you need 12 sides, and for 4 pedals, you need 16 sides, you get the point. Let's put this into Scrap's generator. When you input 12 sides and 3 pedals, you get a shape that seems fine. But when you input 16 sides and 4 pedals, something odd occurs. The script doesn't converge. Okay, perhaps there's just a flaw in Scrap's program. So. I decided to manually construct the wheel in GeoGebra, and to my surprise, I encountered the same results. No solution. As a matter of fact, if we revisit the previous wheel with 9 sides and 3 pedals, and look more carefully, you'll notice that it also fails to converge correctly. There's a noticeable gap between the spokes. This was indeed the case for all other amoeba wheels that the formula just categorized as triangular. So it appears that, as it stands, the original amoeba wheel seems to be the sole member of its family. We'll get back to that later. Continuing on, I began contemplating about the etymology. Previously, it was referred to as the Chebyshev amoeba, and all the amoeba wheels we've explored thus far have stemmed from the Chebyshev straight line linkage. So naturally, I found myself wondering, could there be other straight line linkages with similar properties? The key element that enables the amoeba wheel to function effectively is the ability to stack these linkages on top of each other, with the link responsible for the straight line motion being capable of completing a full rotation. This is what the Chebyshev linkage is capable of. As I looked through the list, it became evident that this criteria eliminated every other straight line linkage Except for the Roberts linkage. The Roberts linkage achieves a straight line motion by utilizing a triangular or T-shaped connecting bar positioned atop two other bars. The connecting bar rotates roughly in the opposite direction of the bars it rests upon, resulting in an approximation of straight line motion. However, unlike the Chebyshev linkage, the Roberts linkage doesn't have a unique set of predefined dimensions. So I began with an arbitrary Roberts linkage. One critical factor to consider initially was ensuring that if I intended to change these linkages together, the connecting bar 
needed to be less than twice the height of the entire apparatus. This adjustment was necessary to prevent the central engine from colliding with the ground. And after some trial and error, I finally got it. This is the Dodecagon Roberts Amoeba Wheel, and it was the first wheel that opened my eyes to something intriguing. Amoeba wheels are actually better for making wheels out of bridge pieces than the typical spoke design. Most people create a wheel by making a regular polygon with a lot of sides. However, this method tends to concentrate stress on a single joint and the transition between joints isn't exactly graceful, often resulting in a wheel which fails if too much load is applied to it. Amoeba wheels effectively address both of these issues. The bottom of the wheel is supported by multiple joints, facilitating a better load distribution. Furthermore, these joints come in contact with the ground much more gradually, resulting in a considerably smoother roll. There is one issue that is specific to amoeba wheels though. Chebyshev-derived forms of the amoeba wheels were often fairly tall relative to their base, so tipping over to another side and shattering was a major possibility. However, this particular variant of the amoeba wheel solves this with a remarkably low profile. Consequently, it would demand significantly more force to tip it over. Who would have known that over-engineering the wheel would have gotten us somewhere? Oh, right, NASA. Anyways, this meant that an entirely new extension to an amoeba wheels had been discovered. Currently, I classify these groups within specific names, which is going to be a recurring theme that spans across all of the amoeba wheels. However, my approach to categorization isn't the sole method used. Tricot utilizes a different system for categorizing amoeba wheels, primarily based on the direction in which the pedals move relative to the exterior ring. Chebyshev amoeba wheels are referred to as positive amoeba wheels, while Roberts amoeba wheels are referred to as negative amoeba wheels. Expanding on this classification, it's possible to express a ratio that signifies how many times one of the pedals rotate relative to the number of times its respective feet completes a full orbit. For instance, here is a positive amoeba wheel with a ratio of 4 to 1, as it takes the pedal 4 full rotations in order for its respective side to complete one orbit. And here's another one with a ratio of 5 to 1. On the other side, here is the negative amoeba wheel that was shown earlier, with a ratio of negative 1 to 1. And here's another with a ratio of negative 2 to 1. And yes, triangular wheels do indeed exist for negative amoeba wheels. These ratios can be visually organized along a number line. Each variant finds its place within its corresponding family, creating a comprehensive system for the current understanding of amoeba wheels. Now, I give this number line analogy not merely for visual appeal, rather, it lets us delve into another thought that's even more intriguing. So, what would go here? A few days later, Chikot began development on a new generator, but with a twist. He reverted back to the old method. But wait, why the old method? Here's a quick recap. The method employed by both Scrap and I, which was considered the newer approach at the time of the first video's release, forced a specific radius for the pedals. The radius was determined by considering the ratio between the spoke and the side lengths, and by assuming that the two sides touching the ground would be completely flat. This works for most amoeba wheels at the time of discovery, however, issues began to surface, as I hinted at earlier. I promised I was going to revisit the triangular wheels. Basically, Chicot took it upon himself to address that challenge, and by using the original trial and error method, discovered a solution. But 
Why? Why was Shakat able to find a solution to the problem that Scrap and I couldn't? Well, if you look closely, you'll notice that the part intended to rest on the ground isn't entirely flat. Examining another solution that he provided, these two bars still exhibit a noticeable bulge outwards. Upon attempting to solve it with only the constraint of aligning the ends, it becomes apparent that there is actually no way to arrange these two sides such that they sit flat on the ground. Their angle from being perfectly collinear relative to their spoke length can be graphed like such. So, as it turns out, the original amoeba wheels family of triangle wheels does exist. With that out of the way, let's return to Chakot's new generator. Unfortunately, Jojura ended up crashing on Chakot. So, I took it upon myself to recreate his generator. And on that night, quite by accident, we stumbled upon yet again new amoeba wheels. First things first, let's address the missing whole number ratios, positive 2 and positive 3. These are what they look like. The positive 3 amoeba wheels form a diamond-like shape, so they have four surfaces they can technically roll on, though it usually prefers to roll on one of the corners if you put a load on it. For the positive 2 amoeba wheels, well, it's an egg. Yeah, I, I don't know what to tell you. These are amoeba wheels which are freed from the constraint of having to rest flat on the ground. As a result, these wheels can assume peculiar shapes. Looking into here, we find wheels which take forms reminiscent of knots. For instance, here's a quatrefoil knot. For this newfound family of amoeba wheels, I decided to give it the name Hana Ameba, or Hana Amoebas, or Flower Amoebas, as Hana translates to flower in Japanese. It's a nod to their radial symmetry, akin to that found in flowers, and also pays homage to Imai-san, the Japanese creator of the original amoeba wheel. And with that, we managed to link everything we learned about amoeba wheels back to their origins, completing full amoeba. Hey, it's Arglin. I hope everyone had a wonderful new year. We just stepped into 2024 as this video got finished being edited. I actually started working on this video about six months ago, and honestly, now that I finished editing this one, a lot of stuff has happened for Amoeba Wheels. There is a lot of incomplete details in this video, and there's also a lot of new things that have been discovered that I haven't gotten the chance to talk about, so this series is going to need to have a part three. It's going to be a pretty long uh, part 3 compared to part 1 and part 2, but I also don't really want to work on it right now because one, editing together this style of video is quite tiring. Um, DaVinci Resolve has been an enormous pain in the ass given a lot of stuff, mainly the things with, um, mainly the things with Fusion just weren't saving um, at all, and I'm having to fight uh, fight it by rendering each section in chunks so that even if I lose the original project file, I still have to render video sections. And second, there are just other videos that, uh, the other videos and other projects that I would love to work on and just release. I love Amiibo wheels a lot, but I've been dedicating most of my time developing and understanding them for over a year now. So I think I'm going to take a break off before I make a third part. If you want to see a bit of the behind the scenes though and try about the details as they come out live, I've been posting some progress updates on my Twitter account. I still refuse to call it X, um, but most of it has been the Polyverse Discord server where most of this has been or was well, being developed at the moment. Aside from that, I've been doing some other things. First off, you might have noticed that I am learning Manum, which is the math animation library created by 3 blue one brown I'm not exactly good at programming, but it's a lot of fun to learn. 
I'm also going out a lot more and enjoying myself. So if people want to catch me, I will be at Anthrocon in Pittsburgh this June and First Upon Malaysia this December, where I will probably be co-hosting a panel. I'm not completely certain about the details, but I've already been the voiceover for one of the panels at First Upon Malaysia 2023, so hopes to that. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed watching my exploration through a very niche little mechanism. As always, feel free to like or subscribe if you're interested. I'm Arglin, your local Turkopoly engineer, and have a wonderful day. Love y'all. Bye bye.